Have you ever wondered about the global implications if China attacked the Philippines? Today we delve into the delicate dance of international politics where every step echoes across the world stage. The political climate between China and the Philippines has been simmering, a stew of territorial disputes and power plays. The South China Sea, a cauldron of contention, is at the heart of this tension. The Philippines with its strategic location has long been a key player in this maritime drama. China's assertive claims over the South China Sea, coupled with its increasing military presence, have raised alarms. The Philippines, on the other hand, has been pushing back, asserting its sovereignty and territorial rights. These clashing interests have created a powder keg of potential conflict, ready to ignite at the slightest provocation. But what could be the trigger for such an attack? It could be as simple as an escalation of the territorial disputes, or a miscalculated move in the high-stakes chess game of politics. It could also be a strategic decision, a power play aimed at shifting the balance in the region. The repercussions of such a move would ripple far beyond the region. Allies and global powers would be drawn in, each with their own interests and agendas. The United Nations would be thrown into a flurry of diplomatic maneuvering, while the International Criminal Court might find itself with a new case on its docket. In such a volatile situation, the world watches with bated breath. The fragile peace hangs in the balance, a thin thread that could snap at any moment, plunging us into a conflict with global implications. But for now, we can only speculate, observe and hope that diplomacy prevails over aggression. Imagine the day when the unthinkable happens and China launches an attack on the Philippines. In the blink of an eye, the world as we know it irrevocably changes. The first ripples of this seismic event are felt not just in the heart of the Philippines, but across the globe. Picture the scene. A peaceful morning shattered by the deafening roar of jets overhead, the ominous hum of drones, the thunderous march of an advancing army. The immediate military implications are profound. The Philippines, despite its brave and resilient soldiers, would find itself in a David versus Goliath battle, facing one of the world's most formidable military powers. Simultaneously, the political landscape would be thrown into turmoil. Countries far and near would find themselves in a precarious balancing act, choosing between condemnation, neutrality or support. The United Nations Security Council would be called into an emergency session with the world's superpowers wrangling over resolutions and sanctions. The United States, bound by the mutual defense treaty with the Philippines, would be thrust into the spotlight. The treaty, a relic of the Cold War era, obliges both countries to support each other in case of an attack. Thus, the US would be faced with a monumental decision to engage and risk a direct military confrontation with China or to renege on its treaty obligations, potentially damaging its global standing and credibility. Meanwhile, countries in the South China Sea region would be on high alert. Vietnam, Malaysia, Brunei and Taiwan, all of whom have ongoing territorial disputes with China, would be watching the unfolding situation with bated breath, acutely aware that they could be next. In the midst of this chaos, the global economy would teeter on the brink, stock markets would plummet, currencies would fluctuate wildly, and the specter of a global recession would loom large. As the world reels from the shock, what happens next could change everything. The attack sets off a domino effect rippling across the globe. Suddenly it's not just about China and the Philippines anymore. The world watches with bated breath, waiting, wondering what comes next. Imagine for a moment the United States, a longtime ally of the Philippines. They are bound by the Mutual Defense Treaty of 1951, promising to aid one another in the event of an attack. The US would likely respond, stepping onto the global stage in defense of their ally. But this isn't a simple game of chess. It's a complex web of alliances and agreements, each move having far-reaching consequences. The dominoes continue to fall. Japan, Australia and other Asia-Pacific allies may feel compelled to side with the United States, escalating the situation further. NATO, an alliance of 29 North American and European countries, could also be drawn into the conflict due to their collective defense agreement. And then there's Russia, a known ally of China. Would they stand idly by or join the fray?
Perhaps they might seize this opportunity to advance their own interests. And what about the rest of the world? Countries may find themselves forced to choose a side, leading to a global realignment of power. The domino effect doesn't stop at military intervention. Economic repercussions would be felt worldwide. Global trade routes could be disrupted, leading to shortages, inflation and economic instability. Sanctions might be imposed, further straining international relations. This chain reaction, this domino effect, has the potential to reshape the world as we know it. Suddenly we're standing on the precipice of a new era, one marked by shifting alliances, rising tensions and the spectre of a third world war. But remember, this is all theoretical. This domino effect is a possibility, not a certainty. It's a reminder of the interconnectedness of our world and the importance of diplomacy and peaceful resolution. The world as we know it could be on the brink of a massive transformation. As tensions escalate and alliances shift, the spectre of World War III looms large. The world finds itself on a razor's edge, with the potential for a minor conflict to spiral into a global catastrophe. The question we face is not if, but when and how such a cataclysmic event might transpire. Imagine for a moment a world plunged into chaos, a world where nations, driven by fear and suspicion, engage in a deadly dance of power plays and brinkmanship. The drums of war echo across continents, drowning out the voices of reason and restraint. Every corner of the globe becomes a potential battlefield, as old feuds reignite and new ones are forged in the fires of conflict. The catastrophic consequences of a third world war cannot be overstated. Unlike the previous world wars, this would be a conflict fought not only on land, sea and air, but also in the digital realm. Cyber warfare could cripple economies, disrupt essential services and sow discord among populations. The advent of nuclear weapons adds a chilling dimension to this prospect with the potential to turn cities into ashes and render vast swathes of land uninhabitable for generations. The human cost would be unimaginable. Millions, perhaps billions of lives would be lost. Not just soldiers on the front lines, but civilians caught in the crossfire or starved by the crippling economic sanctions that would inevitably follow. The social fabric of nations would be torn apart as fear and mistrust seep into communities, turning neighbor against neighbor. In the wake of such destruction, the world as we know it would cease to exist. The geopolitical landscape would be forever altered, with old powers toppled and new ones rising from the ashes. The scars of this conflict would run deep, shaping the course of history for centuries to come. In the face of such potential devastation, one can't help but wonder if there is a way to prevent such a catastrophe. In the midst of all the chaos, there is one tool that could potentially prevent the worst from happening. Diplomacy. This might sound like an oversimplification, but hear me out. Diplomacy, the art of negotiation and communication, is a powerful tool in the hands of nations. It's like a soothing balm that can ease tensions, resolve conflicts, and maintain peace. Take, for instance, the role of international organizations like the United Nations. The UN, with its 193 member states, functions as a global platform for dialogue where countries can air their grievances, negotiate and work together to find peaceful resolutions. The power of diplomacy shines through in these collaborative efforts. And it's not just in the grand halls of the United Nations where diplomacy works its magic. It's in every conversation between ambassadors, every negotiation around a conference table, and every treaty signed with a handshake. Diplomacy is the language of peace, spoken by nations striving for harmony and cooperation. But here's the catch. Diplomacy isn't a magic wand that can instantly make all problems disappear. It requires patience, understanding, and most importantly, a genuine desire for peace from all parties involved. Yet despite its challenges, diplomacy remains our most potent tool in the face of conflict. It's the bridge that can span the chasm of misunderstanding, the light that can guide us through the fog of fear, and the hand that can pull us back from the brink of disaster. In a world on the brink of war, diplomacy could be our last, best hope. As we stand on the precipice of a potential World War III, the future is uncertain. The potential fallout of a conflict between China and the Philippines could be catastrophic, not just for those two nations, but for the world at large. 
It's a stark reminder of how interconnected our world has become and how the actions of one can impact the many. The importance of diplomacy and international cooperation cannot be overstated in these tense times. It's a reminder that our shared future lies not in conflict, but in collaboration. Subscribe for more amazing content. Keep wondering.